Hello everyone, Sienter here with another Rambler for you. And today I want to talk about something I call scales of judgment. Uh, what I mean by this is not so much like uh, what you'd think of as like scales by weighing things, but what I mean is different types of judgments. Because it turns out we make a lot of different types of judgment calls, but, and this is why I'm talking about it, we tend to use very similar language when we're talking about these different types of judgment calls. So I think this is something important to talk about, so that way we can be aware of what sort of judgment calls we're making. Uh, and the the reason why I say this is because what type of judgment calls we make have a, actually a pretty big impact on our ability to communicate with others. Um, if we're unclear about what sort of call we're making, it can make us that way we can get into arguments about things that we don't necessarily disagree on. So the first one of these that I think most people are probably familiar with is a moral call. That is, do we think something is good or evil, um, but good or bad can also be used. The thing that kind of becomes a little bit confusing about this, though, is that things like good and bad are words that we use for the majority of our judgment calls. So when we're addressing uh, some of these other judgment calls, let, let me list off of a couple of different types here and kind of go into brief explanation. Um, so, uh, like I said, there's there's moral, which is, um, I, I don't really have a good way to describe moral judgment call other than what you're doing is you're judging uh, whether or not you think something is morally good or morally evil. And there can be a little bit of, of gray in there where it's like it's hard to call or whatever, but um, that tends to be some ambiguity with being able to sort of make a judgment. Then there are things like quality. Do you think something is good quality or poor quality um, or bad quality? And again, we use those terms, good and bad. In this case, we can also use comparatives like better or best, worse or worst. Often if you're using best or worst, those are going to kind of be exaggerations when you're talking about quality. But this is talking about like craftsmanship, uh, how well put together something is. For example, I can talk about, a, I think this cup is a good quality cup or just as another example, uh, the quality of the sound that these speakers produces is of a good quality. And then there's, uh, aside from, from quality, we also have likability. Like, how much do we like this thing, right? So you can say, and, and the thing about quality is it tends to be an objective measure, whereas how much I like it is a subjective judgment call, right? So if you like something or you don't like it, the thing is with these terms, we often can kind of conflate it a little bit and say, oh, I think that thing's good, I think that thing's bad, without specifying that I like this thing or I dislike this thing. Sometimes we are more precise. And this this one is, uh, thankfully, like and dislike can kind of, um, and the stronger love and hate can kind of sit a little bit distant from some of the other judgment calls. But it also can kind of overlap a little bit because um, we do sometimes not realize that we're making a how much we like something call when we are making and we present it as a different type of call when we we don't realize that we're doing a how much I like this call. And the, the other thing that I should then point out here is there tends to be a lot of different types of subjective judgment calls that we make. So how much we like something is uh, one example, but we can also be like uh, making judgment calls about like the, um, the sort of the state of something, for example. So what I mean by that is if you see think something is, and this is similar to quality, but not quite. Like something could have had a high initial quality, now its quality is kind of poor. Quality is one that comes up a lot, actually. And the thing that, that can be difficult about it, though, is like good enough or not good enough and just different things like that. Um, this is actually, so something that can be real helpful in kind of trying to, to separate different types of judgment calls is to think about things where you're like, this but this. For example, Star Wars Episode Three is... Uh, I actually really particularly like that movie, but I can objectively say there's a bunch of things that are terribly done about it in terms of quality, right? Judgment calls of quality tend to be somewhat objective, although they require a certain level of knowledge to be able to ascertain the actual quality of something, right? But that's something where you can evaluate it and kind of assign a bit of a number to it. But the things that I like about it are more personal things. For example, I really like Ewan McGregor's Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, presentation. And there's some plot things that I feel on multiple viewings you can find that I find really to be interesting. So this is a personal like, right? It's um, it's a judgment call that I can make different types of judgment calls. Like, do I think the quality of, say, the CG effects? Like, what do I think of those versus the quality of the acting, right? And these are kind of like splitting different things. But if we're not 
clear, we can sometimes cause confusion. And this is where we kind of get into some complicated like public debate type things where you can have debates about something where people begin to assign or conflate their opinion on like, for example, some, some measure of like with moral things. Or another actually related thing can be like understanding, like I understand this thing, I don't understand this thing. Um, that's another sort of uh, self-judgment call in a way, actually, where you're judging your your own understanding of something. But I think that this has happened with certain moral panics uh, in the past. For example, rock and roll music, people didn't understand it or didn't like it and wanted to assign negative moral status to it because of that. We have a tendency to want to try to push things we don't like out of our lives. And that can particularly express itself in ways that are very condemnatory of others when they shouldn't be. Now, judgment calls in general, again, what we're looking for is identifying what type of judgment call you are making. And I think, again, there's some super categories that stuff can kind of fall into, like personal opinion on it, moral opinion on it, and then sort of like the objective, like quality opinion. You can also, for example, do... And this is, this is a variant on quality, like how efficient was it, right? Or do you think that such and such a thing is, and this is a value judgment call, is worth the price tag on it? So a value judgment call then is saying the cost of this thing to me is unequal to my overall other judgment calls on it. And, and this is kind of, in, in that way, it's kind of a, almost a meta judgment call, right? Where it's like, I think the value of this thing is this. And there can be a lot of stuff that can be done to try to manipulate perceived value of things. For example, uh, diamonds received a big boost in perceived value when the engagement r- diamond engagement ring concept was invented back in the, I think it was the 1900s, by a, um, a company selling diamonds, right? They wanted to sell more diamonds, so they're able to start this whole like diamond engagement ring thing, and that's pushed up kind of the valuation of diamonds. So there's just different things like that where the perceived value or value judgment call is something that, and this one also tends to be a bit of opinion, right? Uh, One person can say, oh, I think this is overpriced. It's not worth what this other person thinks it's worth, person selling it. Or they think that it's underpriced, i.e. that it's worth more than it's being sold for. We usually call that like a bargain. This can also kind of affect some of our other judgment calls. And this is where you start getting into a complicated web of judgment calls, right? Where it's like, oh, I perceive or this, this person says that the value is here, therefore that makes me think the quality is corresponding to that. And so there's just these different types of, uh, again, judgment calls. As a, an exercise to you, go ahead and think about like what sort of judgment calls you're making and like what sort of categories they actually break down into. And the point of this is we tend to use fairly similar language. Good, bad. Those tend to be our extrema or kind of the sides of our judgment calls. And because we tend to use similar language for things like, I like this particular quality of this thing or a particular aspect, um, I think it has good quality, bad quality, or poor quality. Because we have very similar terms for the ends of our different types of judgment calls that we make, when we're speaking with others, it can be very easy for somebody to think we're talking about one type of judgment call when we're talking about another. And then that causes confusion and can cause arguments and misunderstandings. And that's really why I want to bring up this particular topic and and why I wanted to bring up this issue. Because so often you can say somebody say, this thing is good or this thing is bad. Uh, You see this all all the time in video games, for example, where somebody will make, say, a value call and say, I don't think it's worth developer time to implement this thing. And somebody else will say, I think it is. Or you'll see this also, and and I'm not quite sure how to classify this one, uh, viability, I think, a viability judgment call. Um, Actually, that reminds me, uh, there's there's another judgment call, I was kind of thinking about this topic earlier, and it is a viability call or an appropriateness call, which is where you can say, okay, this thing might be great quality, uh, I might like it, but it just doesn't fit. For example, a screwdriver tends to make for a bad hammer. It could be perfectly functional screwdriver, but as soon as you try to use it as a hammer, it's not really working quite correctly. Or like a toothpick makes an even worse hammer than a screwdriver. I mean, let's let's face it, you're not 
pounding anything in very effectively with a toothpick. Uh, maybe earwax, and even then that's questionable. It's just not designed for it, right? So there's this idea, too, of is it an appropriate thing? Like, you could say that somebody's outfit is not appropriate to the occasion. You might just say that's a bad outfit or that was a bad choice. And again, like I, I was bringing up before I cut myself off with this one, viability is another sort of judgment call that we make. This is something that I see a lot in video games. And the reason why I say it's like, this is a weird one because it's kind of, um, it has other stuff that gets dragged into it. And, and it's, it tends to be dependent on factors. So this is something like, is this particular weapon in this game, quote, viable, unquote, where it's like, you can use it well, and it does what you need. And there's a certain level of, particularly in a competitive environment, where if it's not a certain level of efficiency, or um, power, or however you want to sort of describe what makes something viable in an environment or not, then it isn't viable, Right. So certain measures that you use is uh, a cutoff. Um, A good example that comes to my mind is uh, in Guild Wars 1, the healing profession in that game, or the healing class, they call them professions, which is called the monk. Skills in that game cost a certain amount of energy to use, generally speaking. So what you'd look at is if a monk skill costs more than 5 energy, uh, because energy costs were kind of tiered at like 5, 10, 15, uh, and 25. I don't know why I skipped 20, but I did. And so if you had a skill that cost more than five energy to use as a monk, you had to really ask, is this skill meeting a certain bar of strength? Because the amount of energy that a monk could kind of use, this is a real-time game, your energy filled at a certain rate. And so what skills you were using, like they would draw from your energy pool, which refill at a certain rate. So you had a certain sort of rate of use that you could get out of your energy um, based upon this sort of regeneration rate of your energy. So Skills that were above uh, 10 energy skills, therefore, were very, very expensive for a monk to use because they had to be using skills so frequently to try to keep people alive. So that meant that your viability then is heavily affected by this sort of energy point, right? So that's, that's one example where that is a significant factor. And another example, say, Dark Souls, you'd be looking at things like weapon damage to cost to attack and swing speed and things like that as well as like how big is the hit area and and all sorts of different factors. Particularly in in PvP as well, you'd be uh, asking like, how easy is it to dodge this sort of thing or parry this sort of thing or any number of uh, particular factors that you're looking for. And also you could be looking at uh, in, in Dark Souls, what sort of character build you're making. So that's how you're setting up your character, right? And you can say, well, if I do it this way, this is how much it requires me to be able to get this level of stuff out of it. And if I can put in the same amount and get a better result with something else, and that's more viable. So there's a lot of different things that kind of go into this viability judgment. Uh, And to some extent, they can be really set by what other people think is viable, because it's an interplay. And these are all sort of judgment calls, but they can result in sort of miscommunication to some extent, or um, debate because, oh, this thing was bad or this thing is good is often how people talk about these sort of viability calls. They'll say skill X is bad or weapon Y is good. And those sort of, of calls are not necessarily like quality. They're viability calls, but it can be really confusing. And there also can be things like, I wish X thing was good or Y thing was, was good. Or like, such and such thing is too good, right? And it's like, well, what does that mean? And how are you making that judgment call? And the reason why these judgment calls, these viability calls in video games are so particularly interesting on a certain angle is because there's a subjective idea of what should various things viability be that can be very, uh, it's very opinion driven, but people don't treat it like it is. Uh, They treat it like it's objective. And this same sort of principle can apply to other things. For example, if somebody dislikes a particular color, they might describe all sorts of things with that color as being bad, just because they don't like that color. Uh, And that can mean, for example, they'll overlook like why other people might like it, which is kind of important to understand. A lot of our judgment calls are matters of opinion that we really shouldn't be trying to force on other people. And that's also a very significant problem that occurs with these judgment calls. 
particularly like value calls, like like how much you like it calls, viability calls, things like that are especially likely to run into this. So there's the calls that are slightly more objective, like um, appropriateness can kind of vary wildly uh, depending upon different things, but certainly appropriateness, like how effective is X thing at doing Y task, which is kind of a variant on appropriateness, which is like how effective is a, a screwdriver at nailing, uh, at being a hammer, basically. You know, you can kind of say, well, this one's got more heft to it, so it works a little bit better, whereas this one's small and isn't great for it. Um, and then you can look at quality. Quality also tends to be uh, more objective. But it's really important to understand which which sort of calls are being more objective and which are being more subjective. So anyway, I hope uh, this has all made sense. So I guess that means it's time time for the wrap-up. I feel like I've covered this topic a lot, especially in the second half. Anyway, uh, to wrap up, judgment calls, some of them are more subjective and others are more objective. It's really important to try to be clear in your own mind what sort of call you're making and to try to understand what sort of call somebody else is making. So that way, if you have miscommunication, you can understand. And there are a bunch of different types of calls. Um, I'm not going to repeat them all here, but how much you like something, moral calls, quality calls, viability, appropriateness, and uh, all of these all of these sorts of things. So thank you for listening. You're welcome to contact me at cntier at gmail.com. Please like me on Facebook at facebook.com slash cntier's ramblers. Uh, and if you would, uh, please consider supporting me on patreon.com slash cntier. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>